to start this episode out by reading to you a couple Bible verses about lust, because I don't want to show you graphic images that'll get your pants set on fire without reminding you that it says this, Matthew 5, 28, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with his heart. And the reason why I bring that up is because uh, the new actress for Juliet from Romeo and Juliet was just uh, released. This is him. Or as I'd say her, I was uh, really shocked to find out Shaquille O'Neal just <laughs> recently broke into acting. Um, and I think as you saw from the title, the first thing that came to my mind was, I can shave her. Uh, this person has a mustache. And so this is not even a racist episode, which I would love to make. Believe me, I would love to be a little bit racist about this. This is a episode about what the hell is going on in the country. We have ugly people that are now getting acting roles. Uh, we are putting the ugliest people to the front, to the black community who gets triggered by my criticisms. I just want to let you know, not even you can defend this, okay? There's no, there's no defense here. This person has three lips. So we will be talking about this and so much more. My guest, Scary Gary, will be coming on later in the show. It is approximately 10, 10 p.m. Eastern time in the United States. Let's start the show. <laughs> All right, as I showed you, the new Juliet actress uh, sparks a great conversation today. If you're an audio-only listener, you're listening on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play. This is an audio-only podcast. You can't see it, and this is a blessing, but it is about as bad as you would think. Also, this podcast is brought to you directly by Censored TV. Up in the corner, you can see you can get a membership to our website, 20% off. Get this show, Gavin McGinnis, and so much more. We're demonetized everywhere, so your support keeps this on the air. Bring in my guest on today, podcaster, journalist, and also someone who's just a little bit silly and retarded himself. Scary <laughs> Gary, welcome to Slightly Offensive for the first time. How you doing, man? Hey, it's funny you guys say I'm slightly retarded. I actually went to the Astros game last night in Houston, and it was Autism Awareness Night, and I was not aware of this. And I went up to the bar to get a beer, and I and the lady was like, hey, like, why are you, why are you moving so slow? And I said, sorry, I'm fucking retarded. And she goes, you can't joke about that. I said, I'm going to joke about whatever the fuck I want to joke about and get my beer. That's, yeah, dude. That was my experience last night. <laughs> dude, that's literally, I, I literally saw, a, I just saw a, an interview clip of a man. He's interviewing a homeless clown. This is real. And he was like, he was like, hey, uh, do you have any advice for people to stay out of, like, to not go down the road you went down? And all he says is, don't trust autistic people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't trust them, dude. They're retarded. We are. No, we are, dude. Okay, so let's just jump into this, man. Tell us a little bit about who you are, uh, what you do, and I'd love to know your initial thoughts there. Like, I, I know we call it, we're trying to keep away from, uh, you know, uh, trying to cause insurrections today. We're trying to keep us away from erections. Uh, but, you know, when with who you are and where you come from and you see our society that this, by the way, is the actress that's playing the character that literally drove Romeo, that's played by Tom Holland, to kill himself because he couldn't have her as i mentioned this is what apparently is the defining role of beauty today so we'd love to get introduced to who you are and love to know your initial thoughts on this so i'm a, I am what i would say is a, just a podcast producer media producer uh my bread and butter is a, a podcast it used to be a radio show now a podcast called come and talk it hosted by michael cargill cargill is the guy that's suing the atf and the doj for the bump stock stuff after the uh, las vegas shooting we actually just got back from the Supreme Court. We'll know we'll, we'll know the verdict of that in like a month or so. But um, that's what I that's my my main squeeze there. And then uh, I also work with uh, my buddy Uncle Laser and Bobby Flacco on a podcast called the Drunk Uncle Podcast because we like to get drunk and say wild shit and piss everybody off. And uh, and then I produce a couple other things too. I've I've had a couple beats as a journalist over the past couple of years, but uh, all that's real hard work, and I'd rather just have a good time. <laughs> Dude, I think it's funny though too, like you mentioned getting drunk on air and pissing people off. I used to do that and then I stopped getting drunk on air and thought it would like maybe take down the pressure. It doesn't. And then it doesn't stop. And you actually, it's even worse because now you, I used to be able to like, oh, sorry, I was just drunk on air. Yeah. And then now I'm like, oh. I just I'm don't just, care. 
I'm just kind of like racist, sexist, xenophobic, homophobic, and it's just, maybe that's just who I am. I'm super sorry about that. But anyway, we also call that being based and cool. Uh, dude, I'm happy to have you on today. And I do want to talk about this story because um, it's not the whole the whole uh, lesson today, but I, I think this is just genius. There are moments in history where I actually get presented information like this, and I'm so thankful. Like, because, you know, usually women like this, they had two options in life, right? Mm -hmm. They could join the WNBA, and that's not the greatest, you know, choice in the world. Or they could get impregnated by a man and find out what motherhood is like without fathers. And I feel bad. There's not been a lot of options for women that look like this. So the fact that they can now be actresses, I think this is good for the white community, particularly for Tom Holland's career, because that boy is going to have to do some really complex and difficult acting like i mean when i say he's got to act it's we are he's going to be tested in every way shape and form this man has to look like he's lusting after this woman he has to commit suicide because he couldn't have sex with her so i would commit suicide for having to have sex with her what, <laughs> what's the point of having doing this like what are they what are they trying to prove here what do you think they're trying to prove here because in my opinion it, it's just this like weird real far reach uh into the into the the vast nothingness that is this uh these diversity quotas we have to fill there's no i don't see any point in doing this no, i don't think anybody like nobody feels better better about the about black people or or interracial relationships <laughs> because of this that's you know what i'm saying well maybe the movie's uh funded by gillette you know, you ever think about that? I mean, this person has a mustache. Like, it could just be one giant shaver commercial. Oh, <laughs> like, so you think this might be like a trans angle. They might be going the trans angle here. You know, I would say this: we could be, we could, we could emphasize in transition. I, I, I genuinely, <laughs> dude. I don't know if you know about this, but I had recently explained that the Little Mermaid actress that you know you have to get a visa to travel between her eyes, right? Like, I mean, there's something wrong there. Um, <laughs> And like, I mean, yeah, you think the culture war is bad in the U.S. Talk about a great division. Just look at that, 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 that area. And I even called myself ugly in the process. I wasn't being mean. I was like, look, I'm ugly too. I'm not talking shit on a woman for being ugly. I'm just saying, can we stop pretending that this person is attractive? Of course, they made it about race. That's my same thing here. That's a good is point. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm like, hey, yeah. I'm not saying the black aside, dude, that's so 2016, like race swapping, right. that's old news. Now we're attractive swapping. So there are hot black chicks out there. I'm not personally into black chicks, but there are hot ones out there. Uh, yeah. I can't name five, but they're out there. Yeah, I mean, I'm an equal opportunity lover for sure. I don't really care uh, who I'm sleeping with, but uh, when I'm watching a movie, I don't want to throw <laughs> up while while watching. Yeah, that's that's all I was gonna say. I feel like this is this is a actual. This reminds me to not get too serious here because this show's not that serious. But this reminds me a little bit of uh of architecture today, right? How it's almost like they intentionally make it ugly. It's not like if you're just poor and you're making fun of someone because they're in El Salvador and they you know only have scraps to build a home and you're working with what you got. You're talking about you could be pulling from the hottest of the hottest. This is the, the industry that could be getting the greatest and the latest, right? I mean, you can place hot girls with younger hot girls. Uh, it never even stopped them to put children naked on films, as we know, uh, with Brooke Shields and others before. These people are will stop at nothing with their perversion. And now their newest sick fetish is putting uh, people like this on the, on the screen and on the stage. I think this might even be a play. Uh, but they're putting these people before our eyes. And I don't know what the point is besides just mocking us. Yeah, it does seem uh, it does seem like it's almost like the people with the money at the top are like, let's see what they'll what bullshit they'll buy into <laughs> next. It does feel like that sometimes. You make a good point though about this is Hollywood. It's the best of the best of the best. You can have the most you know beautiful woman. Get Sydney uh, Sweeney or whatever with the titties. Throw her on there, dude. Why would you, why not? It's uh it's right. Tom Holland. He's a very handsome guy. He's a uh, well put together man, a gentleman if you will. I I just don't. It just doesn't. You have to stay in the world of realism for of believability in a film to you know to enjoy it. And I feel like this uh, this might be taking us out of that realm. Well, and we gotta we gotta talk a little bit about this because we have so much to talk about, including Lizzo uh, and all the stuff going on in the culture. Before we uh, jump into that, she, did she let me quit music? 
What happened? Oh, no, she didn't quit. She didn't Ah, quit. We're going to talk about that. She didn't quit. She's back out here. She has new music coming out. Her BMI is still going up. It's all looking uphill for her, especially (laughs) when it comes, except for walking, which she refuses to do that uphill. Uh, Before we jump into that, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor for today, American Hartford Gold. Guys, this is so important. As you know, the American dollar has lost most of its value. I just read that from 2020, the US dollar has lost 25% of its purchasing power, which means that even if you kept your dollar in the bank and you have a five point, uh, you know, 8% interest rate uh, in your savings account, you're still losing out on the value of your currency by over 20%. This is insane because the economy is rigged. This is why you need to make sure that your 401k, your retirement, your savings is backed by multiple and diverse portfolio, including real silver and gold that stands the test of time. We're talking about some king level stuff here. Check out today by calling 855-699-8392 or texting the word offensive to 65532 to find out how you can transfer your retirement, your savings, and invest in gold and silver today. There's also a link in my description. When you reach out to them, know this, two things. They have hundreds of five-star reviews with the Better Business Bureau. They are a A plus rated company. They have worked with literal hundreds of millions. They said billions, but I, that's crazy to me. Uh, worth of investments and transfer to ensure that there's a constant growth in your portfolio. Today, they have a special deal for you guys as my listeners. Get up to $5,000 of free silver when you call them today at 855-699- 8392 or text the word offensive O-F-F-E-N-S-I-V-E to 65532. Check it out today. Links in the description. American Hartford Gold. Uh, Scary Gary, I spent too much time working in journalism and broadcast TV with those ads. Someone even said that. Like your podcast is talking about black women's mustaches, and all of a sudden you're like, invest your retirement, your savings, and your 401k today. But that's broadcast. And hey, no one can hear me. Yeah, it's like no one can hand me figuring out how to fund this despite being demonetized. I could just not talk about this stuff and make the 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 YouTube money, but yeah. it's not well the your YouTube money's not worth it. Already been, they've already put you in that in that black hole forever. Um you you know, do you ever put anything on Facebook? Or oh, just- I have a Facebook that has over two hundred thousand followers and I can I they give they yeah, they've you messed with that. One views, right? Okay, so uh Cody Wilson, the guy he's uh in the firearms industry, he made the the blueprint for the three D gun, right? And then they kind of set him up and got he got screwed or whatever. Uh he was on the podcast Come and Talk that I produced, and we were talking to him about censorship because in the firearm industry we deal with that a lot, right? And he told me that he was at SHOT Show and somebody there said, you're Cody Wilson. He said, yeah. The dude said, I'm the guy that black holed your Facebook page. So they have um, technology at Facebook where they basically just drag your account into a folder and you're forever, forever. You're you're completely shadow banned permanently. So if you could have 200,000 yeah. followers and then you only get 1,000 views on a post or, or what have you. Oh, it's probably worse than that. I, I, I'm going to check that out right now because like, I think it's actually uh, – I was going to say YouTube's just like that as well. Like all of a sudden you just can't, uh, you can't get anything or go anywhere. Let me see. Slightly offensive. Let's look at this. Let me see if I can get this going here. Um, here hey, we while are. you're looking at that, I do have a, a take on the, on the yeah. black mustache lady, Shaquille O'Neal, uh, whatever. Um, I think that when Hollywood producers go out of their way to put someone like that in a film, cause I don't really get, I don't really care one way or the other, but what I do think it is a reflection of the mindset of the people at the top of the industry. And I think that people who go out of their way to do that are, are trying to make up for the guiltiness that they feel because they probably actually are like, we can sit here and, and joke around about this, that, or the third, but they actually probably are like super racist. And they're like, Oh, this is how I can be a better person. Or they're just a terrible person. That's how they feel better about themselves. Oh, we'll put this ugly person on here. We'll put the black person on there. We'll put a person with uh, one leg and one arm. We'll put the handicapped retarded person there, whatever. Like it just keeps get- getting to the point where eventually it's going to be like, they're just going to be putting like, well, I was going to say pedophiles, but I think that's already a thing and has been for a long time. Yeah. I was like, they're not putting the pedophiles in there. They're still looking for more kids yeah. for the pedophiles. It's kind of the opposite. Right. By the way, there you go. Look, 200,000 followers. One like on a post. <laughs> it's oh just the, the page has disappeared. Response. It's just that disappeared. Crazy. Yeah. So there's no point for you even posting on Facebook anymore. No, it just now just posts from my Instagram. So like it just like right. uh, goes over there. But yeah, we're talking about like one like. That's statistically impossible. Oh, 
like impossible to have 200,000 followers and get one like, like, you know, if you, know, if you just post your picture of your dinner with like 30 followers, you'll still get like six. Um, but that's the, that's literally the case, man. The, 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 have you suffered with any censorship? Because what I've noticed yeah. is, is the reason why censorship is interesting, especially for guys like us, or even the guy with the, with the 3d printed gun and many people who are watching this right now is that there's a, there's a censorship that's tier one. And because we're on YouTube right now, I'm just going to be a little bit careful with the wording, but that's like just straight up making a video, you know, calling Jews kikes and, you know, black people, the N word with the hard R and ranting where it's like, it's not illegal speech, but it's like, it's easy for them to get you. And they can just go like, oh, well, you're just a bad person. And it's, a, it's against our guidelines like directly. We said, you can't use this word and you used it repeatedly. So you're gone. But there's like another level to it where you never really get told what you're doing wrong. You just know ideologically right. that they're opposed to the points you're making and that they don't want you to use their platform. And they work as a publisher in this point. They don't like your ideology. So they make it extremely disadvantageous to post on their platforms by either A, making the views to the subscribers very discouraging. So you have half a million subscribers and you can't break 10,000 views on a video. Right. It'll never trend or they demonetize you. So there's no incentive. I mean, and it can get worse than that. Uh, but I think that the censorship is so much more complex than always just dragging you into a folder. Sometimes it's like trying to demoralize you and make it so that like you see an ugly black fat chick with a mustache, get this huge role with this big actor and get rewarded for being fat, ugly, and subpar. And even if you're at the top of your game, they're reminding not, it's not to you. I think the demoralization is to remind other people. If you step out of line, this is what we can do. So whip, don't step out of line. They crack the whip. Uh, are you familiar with the term panopticon? No, please. Enlighten. Okay. So a panopticon was, uh, it was an idea for a prison system that was devised. Uh, it must've been the 18th or 19th century by this, this guy who was, um, essentially attempting to create a system with which a guard could see every single prisoner, but they wouldn't know whether he was looking at them or not, and they can never see him. So it creates the illusion that you're always being watched. So even if you're not being watched, you start to behave like you're being watched. Facebook is a panopticon. The United States government, uh, the NSA, panopticon. It's something that I think everybody should know about. I learned about it a couple of years ago, and I've, I always uh, talk about it when I get the chance because it is a perfect way to surmise what we're experiencing right now. It's it's, it's uh, like a perfect form of censorship, essentially, because you don't know if you're actually being censored. That's what shadow shadow banning is, right? Right. Yeah, you, there's, a, there's a sense of a lack of a... Uh, I feel like it's not just a lack of understanding. It's like, we don't know what's happening. But if you do read Agenda 2030, which people should read their their social media or their media kit, it talks about creating confusion. Like it's, it's it literally talks about uh, basically creating distrust in the president so that you don't know who's really running the country. This was before Biden, by the way. You don't know who's running the country and you're unsure. So you're not putting your hope in any one person so that you have a hopelessness of like there's no solution because no matter, even if you shot, you know, Joe Biden in the head, which we're not sponsoring, this wouldn't change anything in the country. That's all I'm trying to tell people. It's like assassinating the president would do nothing to change the country. It right. wouldn't stop. And that's the demoralization of like, it goes to the media of you don't know what's true and what's not. And that the media discourages the truth, or I should say it's called malinformation, but counter government information. They, they describe like it as. Yeah, disinfo right. against their narrative, but you never, they don't want it to be like, like the traditional Clinton, like you're shot in the back of the head, like you go on a, on a speech, yeah, you say something, then they shoot head. you. It should be, it should be confusing to even to the point to where sometimes you say the truth and they let it out so they can prove to that to you, well, we do let people say that, but only some people in certain controlled situations right. and they don't let you. It's very confusing, but it's like psyop warfare. Yeah. Um. I think they only like to let people that sound fucking crazy say the truth sometimes because then we're almost discrediting ourselves. You know, uh, when when you talk, we're talking about if if the president was to get assassinated or what have you, and there's no trust in the in the president, that becomes irrelevant because the country, uh, as an old friend of mine, John McAfee, told me, the the the, the entire country is run by. Uh, alphabet agencies behind the scenes the fbi the dea the atf they they operate on their own whim that's why me and well that's why uh, uh cargill 
and the NCLA are suing the ATF because they're, they can't write laws. It's not even about bump stocks or the function of a trigger or the rate of fire. It's about the fact that the ATF cannot write law. That's what our legislature, that's what our <clears throat> legislative branch does. So the president is like a figurehead anyway. You know what I mean? He's like, uh, yeah, he's just a figurehead. It's, it's pointless anyway. Well, yeah, let me go to this real fast. Uh, by the way, chat is a little slow today on, on YouTube. If you guys want to go to Rumble, you can go to Rumble. It's the first week back from Easter, guys. Content is always a little bit slow when you come back from holidays. A lot of people are on are on Easter break still and stuff. So if you want a more active chat, there's more active chat on Rumble and on Locals. There's a very active chat with extremely... Uh, yeah, it's I know I know that it's slow because it's slow everywhere. Uh, but it's still just thank you guys for coming and also go to the Rumble chat if you want a little more active chat. Also remember too, it is a Wednesday night, uh, and people are off work, and so even if you're not watching the show, you'll be back next week. Uh, but I wanted to remind you guys that it, it Rumble is better. Everyone's saying I agree, I agree. All right, I want to talk about this. Uh, I only want to go on this topic for a little while longer, but I just wanted to point this out. Um. This was who Romeo and Juliet was. And I think that there's this, like you said, this demoralization that happens where, you know, when we would look at a building or a fictional character or a hero, there's something that you can aspire to be, you know? And we're not talking about unrealistic beauty standards and all this toxic masculinity that they use to destroy those functions. It's that a girl would look at this girl and a guy would look at her and be like, wow, she's very pretty. She's a very pretty girl. She's not overtly sexualized. She doesn't have giant boobs right. she's not sydney sweeney she's just a pretty girl <laughs> with nice facial features and that was you know very eloquent and i think is that leonardo dicaprio that is that's him all right i always i don't know what girl's obsession is with him i feel like he looks like a little bit like he has down syndrome but whatever um he's like shane gillis but with better hair so i you know the thing is about him is like i don't know but that girls like him but now like you know tom holland i guess could be romeo i don't yeah. i don't it's the twink phase. Girls like twinks today. It's, they're uh -huh. really it, into that. It ebbs and uh, flows, you know. Yeah, we're in the twink era. Right? Hey, look, the reality of that, though, is that women will always like masculine men, no matter what's popular on, on in mainstream TV. True, true. I'm more talking about. It's probably just trying to get like 16 year old girls. Like it's probably like uh, selling sex to minors. This is like this is like uh, Disney Channel kind of stuff. But I, I what I feel yeah. about this, and the reason why we're talking about this so exclusively here is, like this girl looks like dom luca or something from 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 twitter like meaning and i mean not, that's not a he's a friend it's not a not a harsh to him i mean she just looks like a man and i don't understand i haven't had the black community get mad at me yet for talking about this but I, i'm trying to understand why we're putting butch lesbians in these roles maybe i'm just overthinking it maybe we can move on but i feel like there's got to be some reason for this and i don't know if it's just maybe it's just marketing they just were trying to run the right wing you know, outrage machine and get lefties to to go see it to support or something. Uh, Who knows? I don't know, but it just seems like there's something nefarious because they keep doing this dude, and it's never good. You know, that actually very well could be what their marketing plan is, is to just piss people off so that they talk about it and then it gets, that's all, that's free press. That's kind of what Trump did and he did it in an absolutely genius way. Yeah, I guess there's not much. I don't even want to go on this anymore, but I do want to. I do want to uh, talk about. I want to one more. One more favorite fat person. Um, I'll just leave you guys with this. That's the new Juliet. Okay, so if you think that that's hot, if that makes turns you on, good for you. I'm really happy. All right, moving along here. Um, so everybody knows that Lizzo. Uh, Lizzo quit, by the way, and she quit music. She said she was quitting, but she actually has a new message for us. It is ironic to me that somebody who says they don't like negative attention and they don't want people to pick them apart wore this on their video explaining how they don't like negativity. Gary, initial thoughts before you even hear what she had to say. I... I mean, oh Jesus Christ! Yeah, I'm you... almost speechless. That that can't really came out of nowhere. I almost feel like it hit me through the computer. Yeah, I feel like he, Jesus literally could have risen, you know, <laughs> somewhere in between that that cleavage. I mean, I'm not sure it's religious, but rising because of that, dude. Oh my God! Well, you could make it through. You know, I mean, like that literally <laughs> is that her cleavage is shaped in the the uh, NASA space shuttle. You know what I mean? You see that? 
Yeah, I mean, rocket. it's not good for somebody to ever be really promoting that they're like completely unhealthy. I don't understand why. Like, just it's that's so terrible. It's a t terrible role model. It's terrible. Why would you do that? Well, let's listen to what she had to say, because this woman who doesn't like negative attention and doesn't like people picking her apart wore this to tell us what she's doing next. Listen, I want to make this video because I just need to clarify. When I say I quit, I mean, I quit giving any negative energy attention. What I'm not going to quit is the joy of my life, which is making music, which is connecting to people. Because I know I'm not alone. In no way, shape, or form am I the only person who is experiencing that negative voice that seems to be louder than the positive. If I can just give one person the inspiration or motivation to stand up for themselves and say they quit letting negative people win, negative comments win, then I've done even more than I could have hoped for. With that being said, I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm going to keep being me. Once again, I just want to say thank you. The love that I've received whew, means Good more God. than you. Well, she says that she's trying to help people to stand up. And that's going to be quite difficult for someone for of her, her size, yeah. I'm oh. sure. But it's it doesn't, dude. It, none of this makes sense to me. Like genuinely speaking, I don't. I just don't get it. Also, that's just is anybody is anybody into that? I don't know. So she just spoke for uh, one minute eleven seconds and said almost nothing. That was impressive. I mean, that was the most vapid, vacuous nonsense that I've heard somebody spew in a long time. She, look, people like her love negative attention they thrive on it if she didn't like negative attention she would go to the gym and get in shape period she that's that's what exactly what it is well and also what i think too is we'll be we'll be going to a segment called are women okay uh because <laughs> because i because i i and i and i have by the way we're covering culture today because i'm yeah. supposed to be having a big debate on friday that could possibly get our youtube channel taken down so i'm like you know what i'm gonna with gary we're just gonna talk about just some culture stuff mm -hmm. we're gonna talk about this stuff but it's really hard these days to not say things that will get you taken down and what makes me angry the most is there's nothing that we will say on this show that is not objectively true. And so censorship is not about policing things that are, you know, illegally harmful, like slander, detriment, right? Uh, defamation, which I could even see censorship taking place. You can't go on and say, Lizzo, you know, molests children or something like that. Because it's like, okay, well, if she doesn't, then we'll take that down. That's an untrue statement that could hurt someone's reputation. Right. What, I, they're, what they're policing today is objective Thank observations you. that we all believe. It's like, dude, this woman is disgusting. It is just <laughs> gross. <laughs> and it's like, and now they're policing being mean, but also when did the truth become mean? The truth isn't emotional. It's just is. Right. I mean, dude, you, it's in a, we can, we can, our opinion can be, she is fat. That also happens to be a fact. She is clearly fat. There's nothing wrong with saying that. It's not untrue. Uh, and it's honestly, I don't even think it's really that mean. I think that's a new thing with the the body, uh, the body positivity stuff. I mean, I, in no world do I want somebody to be obese like this. You know, it would, I, I'd be happier if she was in shape and she would stop getting made fun of. It's a win-win. Somebody just needs to help her work out. Yeah, women will literally complain about everything except for taking responsibility for their life and losing <laughs> weight. Like, I've just noticed that. It's like, like, because I saw this article, right? And I was wondering when this all started. And I remember this article from 2020. That, that was one of the first times that I remembered, like, hey, we're not doing well, right? Right before COVID started, this was my first suggestion <laughs> on why COVID started. Why I stopped, date, stopped online dating and started oh my fingering gosh. my own ass. Um, and the, the, uh, the tags were self-love three fingers in the butt and my big ass. And I remember thinking like, dude, this was right before we heard about COVID. Ugh. It was like, I, I just Patience, knew that things right weren't looking there. good. Yeah. Things weren't looking good because this was like, that's what I mean. Like women will literally stop dating and fingering their own buttholes before just taking responsibility and losing a little weight. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, also, uh, you know, the state of of dating and 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 there's bad men out there too, but the state of dating in the country right now is so out of control. I mean, I'm never gonna get married, dude. It's I I go on the road on the to, to these shows with my comedian buddies and all these women are all cheating on their husbands and it, it's just an absolute train wreck. Um, I look at, look at this lady. What did, why do you think she stopped dating? She looks completely insane. She looks like a little, like an elf of some sort. Nobody wants to deal with her because she's probably, I mean, if her personality matches the way she looks, she's probably also super fucking annoying. Yeah. Dude, I love, uh, I love how the, look, my, my conclusion is people say that the dating game is bad because uh, you know, there's no good men out there. I'm like, you know, no. I think I think it's really the really the women because yeah. like I I I love uh I love females not only in conservative movements but just in general who they look at a situation and they've never had any involvement in it. They they could not have ever been to blame for any part of it. It is everybody else's and everyone else is a monster and they're just a victim in every way which which to make sense i mean that's the way they're built that's the way their frames are the issue isn't that they think that way the issue is that we've socially engineered society yeah. in a way that gives them power so like when people like people be like you know oh you're sexist and misogynist it's like based if true um like you're what are you accusing me of of being who i am that's great. Everyone else is a bitch for not being that way. Um, cause sexism and misogyny just means that like, just like this way you're racist today. If you notice patterns, you're anti-Semitic today. If you're against, you know, blowing up kids in apartment buildings, like those words just lost their meaning. So if you're saying, I just understand the basic differences between men and women, our moral authority and our, our ability to relate. And I don't relate with psychos like this. And I don't give them any credence to speak into my life or to speak around me. Then hell yeah, brother, let's do it. I mean, yeah, this lady is so unbearable that she has completely like what kind of what where is where is your head at when you're like, you know what, I'm I'm not gonna ever date again. I'm just gonna finger my own ass. That's so hey, insane. Can That's you knock insane. it? Have you tried it? Have you tried it? Look, man, I don't want to spill too many beans here on the show today, but <laughs> listen, dude, I know you were cleaning, you were just cleaning yourself <laughs> with soap. It slipped in. We've heard the excuses before. It was one finger. <laughs> So it's not gay until it's three. It's not gay. But you know what, dude? Here's the here's the thing. It's not it my friend, he works in the adult industry. He told me that you that you I want your opinion on this. He told me you're not gay until you suck a dick. N nothing else is gay. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> what? Makes no okay. sense at all. <laughs> it's like, okay. That is, I'm not going to go to the porn industry for my advice, advice. on what is, what is uh, normal and not, but sure. I will say this, those people are pretty crazy because I have met yeah. people from the porn industry who I don't want to get graphic here, but they actually are able to do uh, like gay scenes and stuff by putting cocaine on their penis. So they numb it and they end up creating like artificial uh, erections and stuff to literally stay aroused. So I don't really want to go to them for my advice, but I will say this fingering your own ass. Is it gay? I'll leave the chat to decide one's for yes, two for no, but is it gay permanently or just gay while you're in the shower? No. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if you could be temporarily gay. However, I will say that, if I were to give advice to people in the dating scene, like I would, I would accept that it's difficult, but I don't think like, it, like imagine this, like this is, this is what I love about the media. Like imagine real advice, ready for this? Like real advice. Hey man, I'm like having trouble dating. It's really tough. You know, everybody's crazy. I don't know what to do. And then your friend looks at you in the eye and goes, have you ever just tried deleting those apps? And fingering yourself in the ass and <laughs> like, no, I never thought of that. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, I mean, that's a solution. I don't know if that's a productive one, but it is what it is. Dude, this, oh man, dude, this lady literally wrote this, oh. typed that headline out, and thought, "I'm going to publish this." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what? Yeah. No, that's just that's just some funny stuff, man. It makes me laugh. Speaking of that, I got to give a huge shout out to one of our sponsors for today. Great segue. <laughs> Shout out to the wellness company, uh, reminding you that people do some crazy stuff and you never know when you're going to be around that insanity. So you've got to check out the emergency kits, which have all of the basic necessities that you need to fight infections and avoid having to go to the hospital. Look, I don't trust the the, uh, the uh, medical industrial complex. Um, they made ivermectin illegal in this country, in Australia, in many other countries, you couldn't get it. It's a very basic antiviral you can use. Also antibiotics, amoxicillin, z pack things that you would need on hand. You can go down to Mexico to buy this stuff but you can't trust the quality you can spend over five hundred dollars in an emergency room you know but why would you spend that money and go and wait hours and waste your whole night or you could try to get an appointment good luck on that and paying huge co-pays with these emergency kits they come with everything that you need including ivermectin z-pack amoxicillin and more you can save 10 percent today at checkout at twc.health slash o-f-f-e-n-s-i-v-e that's twc.health slash offensive for 10 percent off plus you can get a first aid emergency kit if you want it but i encourage you to get these emergency kits have all the, the medications you need on hand it's a real simple and easy form you fill out and they'll send it directly to your house today at twc.health slash offensive get all the antibiotics you need to help fight infections and be prepared for the next crisis because you never know if the person you were dating took a break and decided to do what that last person just did which i cannot say during the middle of an ad read for the sake of the company but you've been watching and a lot of you logged off during that conversation because you were probably experimenting yourself anyway all right let's get back to the show uh so with to asking people if women are okay gary you know i i i want to talk about you know the the reality of things like this you know we joke about it right just like you're not you're not gay until you suck a dick and you know you finger your ass you know in the shower it is funny because we do read it and it is like yeah this is actually pretty crazy these are these are real conclusions people come to um but i saw this article from the new york post uh that was really um scary to me it says here uh that a 28 year old dutch woman decided to euthanize herself due to crippling depression and this isn't the only person and when i read into the story it was talking about how she basically with the doctors had told her that they would tried everything they tried medication uh they had tried therapy and as my friend josh lacash said it apparently her doctors never heard of getting sunlight eating meat exercise and yeah, and going for a run. Um, and so she's, you know, euthanizing herself. She's a pretty girl. She's 28. And also, I'm going to add in there, just finding a man, like, like get a man to, to women, your emotions are crazy. And you're going to need like, you know, a little bit of a hype team, you're going to need your man because you, you're not you're not stable. And you're not confident. So you need a man's stability and consistency to, to build off of I'm not joking. That is that I, I've, I've known people who threatened to sue me for saying things like that which is unironic. You're like, I'm not unstable. I'll I'm not doing, I, I do not need a I don't need a man. Fuck you. I'm suing you. Um, but, but I mean that genuinely is like, Hey, women are not doing well. And they're being told to finger their buttholes if they can't <laughs> date rather than just do some self analysis, find God and maybe lose some weight. Have kids. They're also, they're all, yeah, have some children, get married, have kids, build a home, go buy useless shit at Hobby Lobby, you know? Go, go do that. Instead, they're killing themselves, and I'm seeing this, it's, euthanasia, by the way, is not for men. Men will commit suicide, men will just kill themselves. We do it ourselves. Euthanasia is to kill women, because they need assistance to, to be suicided. And I don't know, I was just thinking about that. I'm like, this is crazy that no men are speaking up against this. We don't hear a lot about against euthanasia. But I told I told you guys years ago when Canada was legalizing it and stuff, they were saying it was going to be used because terminally ill patients that were like, you know, going to die in a week from a painful can brain tumor just wanted a, an easier, more painful out. I go, nah, this is going to turn into people being like, I have anxiety. I want to die. And then yeah. they're just going to kill them. Yeah. I mean... We're uh, filtering out the weak of society. That's a that's a silver lining of it, I guess. It's a dark way of looking at it. It's morbid, but I mean, dude, here's the here's the thing about women these days. They all are nuts. They always have been. And something I'm noticing is that I'm 31, right? I've dated women that are a year or two older than me. I've dated younger women, whatever. Uh, I'm noticing that these chicks are hitting 28, 29, 30, 31, all the way up to 36, and they're like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get married. I can't find a guy. Well, yeah, your standards are way too high. They've slept with like a lot of these chicks have slept with like just damn near like they got like a triple digit body count almost. 
and then they wonder why no guy wants to deal with them. And then they're, they're like, that's why they get depressed. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm, I'm a, I think that, and I'm not even really, I'm kind of a hypocrite in this capacity because I don't have a really orthodox uh, or traditional dating life, but I do think we need to go yeah, back. Yeah, you mean, you mean you're a man? You mean you're a man? You have standards and morals and you fight for them, but you <sighs> fall short of your yeah. own standards sometimes? Yeah. Feel yeah, like. yeah, yeah. I, I just, I think we do need to go back to sort of a traditional nuclear family. Seriously. I think that's something that could help people with, because the more stability they have with a family, uh, the, the less likely I think they are to be depressed because you have people around, you have a support system and, you know, it's just a time tested piece of society that's always uh, been around. And it's, is it, is it any surprise that with, with the degradation of the nuclear family and all these dating trends shifting that people are having more anxiety and more depression and whatnot. I mean, I think that's also part of like big pharma and a couple of other things, but I do think that the lack of a nuclear family, traditional family values is, I think it's hurting people emotionally. Yeah. You know, like, okay. So this is, this is where I want to be careful because I, I, the standards don't just go from, from women though. It is also men are unrealistic with themselves because like man talk, as I call it, and female talk, like TikTok, are are funny to me because women talk is all like, "Girl, you're a queen. Girl, you're so good the way you are." And you watch these right. videos, and it's like, "Are you? A, what? A, how would you rate yourself?" And the girls are all like, ten. I'm a ten. Yeah, I'm a ten. Damn it, I'm a ten. And you're like, "Okay, yeah. I mean, how many? That's how many? I didn't say how many cheeseburgers you have from McDonald's this week. I said how much? What? What's your rating of yourself? But with the man talk, I think a lot of men, and this is gonna sound kind of gay, but a lot of men have unrealistic expectations for themselves because their talk is actually the, it's actually more realistic. It's like, you're a fucking retard. You're not lifting enough weights. You're not a good enough Christian. You didn't post enough Bible verses today. You don't eat healthy enough. You, you are at what? 15% body fat. You should be at 8% body fat. You need to marry a virgin. You need to, you know, to declare, you need to make a crusade. You can't just be Catholic or Christian. You need to literally take back Jerusalem. And it's, it's kind of, it's cool. It's based like, you know, we watch it. We're like, hell yeah. But a lot of men too are not realizing like, dude, you don't need to figure all your life out to get married. You don't need to be making 250K a year to get married. You don't need to be the most fit person to be a good dad. Like you can look at these men and we we rightfully, you know, we'll look up to them. Like, oh, that guy's a really good religious example. Or that guy's a really good family example. Look, you may not have the perfect family. You may not become a marriage and family spokesperson telling everyone how they can make their families better, but you can at least get married, figure it out. And you, you need to get married to figure it out. That's why I think men are like, well, I need to figure this out. Go get married and you will figure it out. That's why married men make more than unmarried men. That's why married men typically are actually happier than unmarried men because we sit there and you go, you're not putting off responsibility. And the longer you put off responsibility, the more you feel like you can get into a depression and anxiety because it's like, well, I need to just become a little bit wealthier, a little bit stronger, a little bit more secure. Dude, go get married, marry someone, more importantly, that doesn't believe in divorce. You should not believe in divorce. Yeah. That, and, and like they say, do you know what's, divorce is, I mean, uh, working out a rough patch in a marriage is difficult, but you know what's even harder? Divorce. So it's like, we need to get back to that where people would go through rough patches and would just stop being a bitch. Don't be a baby. Have babies. Don't be a baby. Yeah. Work your shit out. It's, it might get tough, man. And you will. I always tell people this. You will at some point hate your spouse or dislike them because you hate yourself sometimes. You go through weeks where you're like, I hate who I am. I hate what I'm become. Work on yourself work on and and you will work on each other but also in marriage like that's why i love i've never seen i never see more criticisms about marriage and standards than people who are just unmarried they're all over the internet all these yeah. influencers are all about like well here's what marriage should be and here's what a godly marriage is and you're like you aren't even married you're a whore that wears a cross necklace <laughs> uh also a lot of people that are talking about i don't ever want to have kids don't have kids don't have kids they're 50 year old women that can't have kids anymore so it's almost like hmm, are they actually projecting that they regret not having kids because i i i'm telling you man i've experienced that with a lot of uh women that i know and and at least they're honest about it eventually but it's definitely a problem the thing about marriage though is i got a couple points here that i wrote down as we were going um women i think actually they they when they talk to each other i think that they're like 
you go girl, this and that, whatever. But they actually don't really feel that good about themselves. That's why they're doing it. So it's like they're trying to manifest uh, positivity in their life. So I respect that. I get that. But I think a lot of these women really are like very depressed because they don't have meaningful relationships with men in their life. And I think that's because they've been socialized to have these like we're idolizing like these whorish values. And again, don't get me wrong, dude. I, I, I like I, I like uh, I like a lot of women. But it, it's not a good thing. There's a time and place for that is what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Like, I like to party. I'm pretty wild. I get out of control. I do this, that, the third, whatever. But there's a time and place for that. It's not for – it's not to be exposed to children, and it's not for mainstream society because it's always going to exist, but it needs to be over here behind closed doors, in my opinion. I'm just being realistic because it's always going to exist. But the problem with marriage is that the entire marriage system is set up against men. What incentive does a man have to get married anymore? Because if they do get divorced, everything gets taken from them, all, half their money at least, their car, their kids. I I have a kid in California. I wasn't even married, and I can't – I'm paying child support for a kid that I can't see. I mean it's – and, and I'm, I go out of my way to try to be in my son's life. But there's, there's a system set in place to garnish wages and to make it to, to base. Look, you go to court, if you have a kid or you get a divorce, the judge, even if it's a male judge, is siding with the woman 90% of the time. It's why would a guy want to buy into that system? And, and look, I agree with you. I do think there are some benefits in terms of people are happier that are married. People make more money that are married and it's better for children. And we need to have, like I was saying earlier, the nuclear family, but the system needs to be changed before guys are going to start getting married again. That's why nobody's getting married. I agree. Again. Dude. No, I, I, so I, I think that's where ideology and commitment to God comes in. Like just getting real is, yeah. is that this is where marriage, it's not just the laws, but it's understanding that marriage is a spiritual thing, not a legal thing, that it is supposed to be a man under God, a woman under man, and children under the woman. And I saw some some guy made this meme about it with umbrellas, right? Like a big umbrella was God, the smaller umbrella was the man, then the woman. And the top comment was from a woman. She was like, I'll never be beneath a man. And you go, you stupid bitch. You are you have no idea what you're talking about that's like being like like oh i'm gonna go into an ancient battle without a shield because uh, i don't need a defense i can protect myself or like who like you know who needs a seatbelt? <laughs> i know how to drive and it's like okay buddy is it true it's not saying that you're gonna die if a man's not in your life you're living in a society where men are not in control, where men are not in authority in women's life, and it's insane. Yeah, I've made I've made the mistake in my life of trying to accept. You know, I've I've been foolish before, worked around a lot of women, been around people like that, and thought that you know we're all equal or we can be friends and this stuff. And no, that's just not true. It's just not true. And the reason why is is because there's a nature of woman that was designed and was built to be a helpmate and to be an assistance to men. Okay, that does not mean that they are not, they're better at men than men at so many things, nurturing, caring, but this idea of a lack of authority really, really screws up a lot of things because I think men don't fully understand how to talk to God until they need to have a wife under their authority because you realize how scary that is and how difficult that is and how absolutely there's no one in the world that can help you with that no matter how much advice they give so you have to lean on god and if you both trust in god and she's trusting in you and you're trusting in the lord there is a so certain protection but but marriage like you said change the laws yes i totally agree with that but that function of like marriage is just this legal contract and then when we break it we go through a legal contract to figure out what we own and what we don't rather than a lifelong commitment under god it it doesn't just destroy marriage. It destroys the purpose of men and the purpose of women. Yeah. And it makes like women are out there thinking, well, I don't need to be under the authority of man. The only thing that you have, a, you have an authority woman. It's called the courts. Like they just replace the husband with the court. And that's the structure. That's kind of what I was trying to point is the structure of marriage is not because we just need to change the laws. It's because they've replaced the covering of God with the covering of, of government, but government is now over man and so men are no longer under the authority of god they're under the authority of courts and it destroys the country because the government's corrupt and now we worship a corrupt god i don't know if that makes sense but yes yeah, sort, of, sort of my thought process so the, the, basically the fabric of society is being torn apart because people are leaning on the government as opposed to some spiritual entity i'm not like super religious per se but i am i would say i'm spiritual and i support uh christianity 
I was raised Catholic. I was confirmed. I like the values that it espouses. I'm not, again, not super religious, but I, I totally get what you're saying. Here's the thing, though. In, in the modern society that we're living in, I, it's, it's, you can, you can, we can say everything that we're talking about, uh, a woman under a man under, and a man under God and et cetera, et cetera. That is for people who, uh, buy into this, that particular system, right? It's not going to work for everyone. Right. Because it's too far gone. We don't live in a, uh, like a theocratic country. You know what I mean? But I do think that if more people operated that way and showed the healthy side of it, because I'm not ever going to tell anybody what to do. I, that's not my thing. But you can give, you can lead by example. That's what I'm trying to get at. And if people lead by example in a good way, then maybe it could change uh, hearts and minds, right? Because like, at the end of the day, what I want is for people to be happy uh, and to be in a healthy, cohesive society. But you're not well, going to get there by forcing no, no, no. And you know what? I ag I agree. But what I'm what I all I'm trying to say is that that it's still like we do have to fix the laws. But it's sort of what I'm saying is I don't think those are going to get fixed anytime soon. Right. And so what I'm what I'm saying is that if you still want to make marriage work, that's why you've got to be careful. Just like just like realizing the government redefines you know gay marriage or these things. Look if you want to live in a liberal society and have gay people be able to get together, then whatever. Look, I've been a complete degenerate in seasons of my life. I would say I'm a bit like, like I'm not even here lecturing people on here's how to be a perfect person. Like I have fumbled the bag in my life in more ways than one. And sometimes that bag had white powder in it and it was a crazy night. You know what I mean? But <laughs> at the same time, at the same time, I also still, like you said, want to do what's right and ultimately want, what's good for the country. And what I'm saying with the marriage thing is that it's it's not just marriage. It's like when we've replaced God with government, the, the psyop that women do not realize, kind of like, um, like I laugh, there's this uh, influencer for PragerU named Xavier, very nice guy, seems smart. And he talks about how two years ago he left like BLM and he was marching for BLM and he like broke free and is red pilled. Now he works for Zionists and pushes the war in Gaza. And I'm like, brother, you left one plantation for the other. Like you literally BLM and Zionism are like just as bad as each other. They're just ideological camps that control people into tribalism that works against Western civility and nationalism and ties us up in divisive minority politics and issues that are not good for us. But people think, well, if I break free from one bad thing, that must mean the thing I went to is good when it's not objectively a good thing. So when we break free from government, that's all I was going to say is like, we're still looking for the government to fix marriage. And that's why I think the government having a say in marriage has been detrimental to the beginning. Right. Like it's like, that, this is why they weren't supposed to get involved. This is why we didn't want gay marriage. It wasn't because everyone was like, fuck gay people. I hate them. I want them to all die. It was saying, Look, marriage is so important to the construct of society. If you put the government too far into this or in it at all, the government always goes towards corruption. And this is such a sacred union and authority structure that it'll literally unravel. And this is why you'll find most conservative e-girls, e-thoughts are not married themselves like because of what you said. They're just, it's like, if you want to be a conservative woman, quit the internet. It's like self-defeating. Log off. Like, I, I'm not, it's not a joke though, log off. You can be on the internet if you're a girl, I don't care. But like, if you're trying to push conservative ideas as a woman, you're not gonna be pushing them on the internet, okay? right? This right, is right. not it's it. Cool. It's taught in church and in family and in life. It's not, the internet, the reason why liberalism and progressivism work so well on the internet, not just because the algorithms are rigged or it's, it's, it's rewarded, is because the internet in and of itself is a vice to most people. It's an addiction yeah. and addictions lead towards degeneracy. And those are the things that will profit. We call it brain rot today, but it will, it'll promote brain rot, right? And that's just naturally the recourse. Uh, I think I have a picture of this here. Not a not a bash on anybody, but somebody was saying this is what Twitter is today, and I liked it. Uh, Libs of TikTok's a friend, by the way, but it's like this is what our con our conversations are. Look at this, some gay <laughs> guy, and Elon Musk is like, wow, and then someone's like, my pussy in bio, and this is literally yeah. what what it is. So I mean, this is brain rot, right? This is like, and I take part in it, but the internet leads towards brain rot, and I feel like that's what we're experiencing. Maybe that was long winded, but that's how so, I feel. This is what I'll say. Uh, if, if, if women want to do the, do the only fans hustle, sure. Let them go for it. Again, I don't really care, but I don't think that ultimately leads to happiness. I have a lot of female friends that work in that industry and a lot of them have, uh, 
in confidence told me I'm, I'm depressed I'm this, I'm that. I'm like, well, have you thought about stop to stop doing this? If you, if you're not doing the same one, maybe that's, maybe that's part of it. Maybe you need a good man in your life. Maybe you need, uh, something, you know, I don't know, just, just have a healthier hobby. And even if they wanted to still keep doing that, sure, go for it. But I have something to at least try to like bounce it out or something. I want to go back to what you were saying about the marriage thing though. What you were talking about, because this resonated with me, God, man, woman, child, that is almost a complete necessity if you want to get married. That's the only way it'll work. I don't think there's any other real, uh, I mean, I could be wrong. I've never been married, so I feel like maybe I do sound like a little bit of a, a douchebag talking about this, like I know what I'm talking about, but. No, you're good, dude. Dude, I, you, dude let's get back to like the fact of. You don't need to be a physicist or have committed suicide to know that jumping off the Golden Gate Bridge yeah. might lead to your death. Like, um, can we just get back to the obvious? Like, well, right, right. I can I use, use my eyes and see that this kind of works. The marriages are working in families who, not because they say they're Christian or because they say they're godly, but people who apply the Bible, pray, they work and build their, their marriage on a foundation, it typically works. And divorce rates prove that. Right. Christians have the same rate of divorce as non-Christians because that's just a title. But Christians who read the Bible, who pray together daily, who uh, go to church, when you start adding these factors in, their marriage divorce rates are almost non-existent, by the way, uh, comparatively to other groups of people. Same thing with Islam, too, and stuff, by the way. But you, you also might be killed if you divorce your husband. So, so with, with that, though, I also think that marriage doesn't work for a lot of people. You know what I mean? It, I, I ju it just doesn't. So I think that and, – and also, for the record – uh, if a man is leading a relationship, I don't think that necessarily means that the the woman is any less important. In fact, I kind of think that most, almost every guy I know that is very successful is married and their wives are uh, almost better women than they are men in a way. Does that make sense? Yeah, a hundred percent. I think, I think women are actually extremely important. And I think that uh, they don't like, what's that? There's that one Beyonce song. They're not who runs the world girls. I don't think they run the world per se, but in a certain capacity, uh, women can create and or destroy society if you know what i mean by that oh well women are the most destructive and creative force like they create life life but every ruined career you see is some bitter woman like you know what i mean like so yeah. it's like that's that's sort of the case right even a man's life it's not even career it could be marriage right like women just come after you and they're relentless um and that's also not submitting to god so that's what i meant about the idea of i think it's really important to know that even if you're not overtly religious or even you know, fully Christian. That's why acknowledging a Christian society is so important because it's going, okay, I may not be going to church and this stuff, but believing that there is a creator that has a standard for me that I need to hold myself to. If I, I, I don't need to have my wife be a nagging bitch because yeah. she's probably going to nag me about things that if I was really thinking about the best version of me, I would already be doing like a lot of marriages are because women are upset at men for not living up to their potential. And if you believe in a higher power or a higher calling that's calling oh, you to man. your potential, then you can be naturally doing things and then they'll feel safe and secure. Yeah. And I've, I've learned that the hard way, right? So when you're not living up to your potential, it's why guys are like, well, what does it mean if I just sit around and watch sports and drink beer? And you're like, well, nothing, but watch your sure. wife become a raging bitch at you. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, she, because she's seeing lost potential, time you're not putting into her and the kids. So yeah, don't get married. And that's my advice. Unless you want to make, if you want anything else to be your priority, pleasure, your career, you know, if you want anything else besides like, like your marriage to be the most important thing, don't get married because if your marriage isn't doing well, then you will not be doing well as a man yeah. and everything else will suffer. If you're doing well at home, you will weather the most difficult career problems, personal problems, people can die in your family. If things are bad at home, you'll self sabotage and blow up your own career. So, that's yeah, I've I've uh, I've sort of done that a time or two. Also, when you're talking about these women that are bitching at their husbands because they're seeing uh, lost potential, you pretty much just describe like every serious relationship I've ever been in. And uh, <laughs> I got to take accountability for that. Also, dude, I do think that there is uh, some dude. I, I I can bash women all day, right? I love women. Don't get me wrong. I do. I really do love women. Uh, sometimes a little bit too much, but I can talk shit about them and. Be, and you know, be borderline misogyny adjacent all day. Who gives a shit? But a lot of, sometimes these women that even the ones that piss me off, they actually do have a point. They're, a lot of these guys are fucking useless. They don't have skills. They don't have trades. They don't work out. They're not doing anything. They're sitting around drinking beer, watching fucking sports. They don't make money. They don't like they, what's their value? 
you know? So sometimes they, these women do actually have a point. I know, I know. Yeah, go lift weights, dude. It's, but that's why it's like, go lift weights and go do something. Dude, because look, I was just reading uh, in Australia here, in order to like be a proper homeowner and live a life on a single income, you now need $473,000 a year oh to be God. able to just have a normal, like uh, someone I know here was looking for a home. And I mean, it was like, what one and a half one and point two million dollars for a home and didn't even have a stove in it which was crazy like not even like a place for a stove like it needed a, a kitchen demo um and i know like the average price of an apartment around where i am is like between 1.5 and three million three million dollars and these are apartments by the way so it's it's a very expensive country and uh and i noticed that you know that's a lot of money right that's nobody's really making that but you can make that. And it's not because you can't make that kind of money. It's just because it takes a certain amount of grit, tenacity, focus to start getting into that income bracket. And that's the reason why, you know, when you look at income brackets, you'll see that as you get older, it changes because you should be maturing and growing. So a lot of men, I feel like if a lot of men, this is really, really shallow. Maybe the guys in here will agree. If you made more money, it would fix 95% of your problems with women, with your own ego, with like just everything. And that's why I don't like the money doesn't buy happiness bullshit because it kind of does. And it, 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 it does your problems. Yeah, it, it doesn't fix all your problems. And also it can cause more. But that's like saying working out doesn't fix your health issues because I mean, it doesn't fix your issues because you could get sexy and then end up in an affair. It's like, okay, yeah, like, like yeah. you're right. Like, I mean, yeah, you could get into an affair because you're looking sexy. But that's but still about accountability, and that comes back on you as a man. Correct. So it's like, it's like, but yeah, dude, working out like, just like it's like everyone trying to find out ways to fix their health besides just literally eating less and working out more. Like, like it's like, dude, just go move and restrict your calories and you'll look good. You'll be completely fine Dude, the rest of your life. There in you go. today's day and age, there's a fucking gym on in every fucking section of every city. There's Ozempic, there's steroids. Like, dude, you can do anything. You can walk in circles somewhere. I don't understand how people are so wildly obese. Part of it is because uh, our country and the corporations that feed us are poisoning us. That is, all, that is a thing that's happening. Testosterone levels are low, so that really affects men. Um, and we do have this like lethargic, sedentary lifestyle in the United States. And I think that to a degree, it, I hate saying stuff like this because I'm pretty, I'm pretty big on extreme ownership, but to a degree, it is not some of these people's faults because they don't like some of these people's, their body doesn't metabolize the, all these like chemicals in our food properly. And, well, and I know, yeah, there's, there's a lot of issues. Also, it's funny to me that. Uh, we were talking about how uh, media is slow after holidays, right? Like on Easter, or should we say the Trans Visibility Day or whatever? Yeah, uh, thank you. Please be, please be politically correct, yeah, sir. Yeah, come on, come on, come on. Uh, what's funny to me about that is that we're totally well. We the the you know the the people that are there's people that are okay with this, not us, but there's people that are okay with giving testosterone to kids to transition them, but they're against people taking testosterone to cure depression or to cure certain ailments or to get more muscular because our testosterone levels are somewhere between 20 and 40% lower than our grandparents. So maybe we should be taking, I mean, dude, I don't know what the long-term effects of this would be and stuff like TRT has to be taken continuously for it to work, but there, there's gotta be something done about the, the, our hormone levels in the United States because they're getting wildly out of control. I'm going to do it by the way. I'm going to do test when I get back to uh, the States. It's really hard to get here uh, in Australia because they like, I'm with you on that dude. I was talking about uh, hormone disruptors. Gavin Newsom was talking about birth control today, uh, ripping into Charlie Kirk saying basically that he's crazy for saying birth control makes women crazy. Um, well, but, duh. Yeah. Well, we know that it does. Um, also, hitting for some reason if their women are over 30 and they're not full-time homemakers i also feel like they go crazy too that's not that's not a joke i you women know who's that hit over 30 that? chelsea handler yeah but if they're not homemakers they and they haven't figured out how to be at home or their husband hasn't figured out how to make enough money for them to stay home they right. become resentful bitches and i've seen that 
in a lot of yeah. like because they don't respect their husbands so then they don't respect the husband so they lose respect for men and then they become like a, a destructive force i was trying yeah. to explain this to someone which is why career women are some of the most destructive people in the entire country in the world because they're the most unhappy and it's been proven that homemaking women are much happier and it doesn't mean that that's why i think it's funny it doesn't mean you have, if you have the capability to run your home like a business, I don't mean that in a mean way, but if you could be really clean, really organized, your husband's going to fucking love you. If you have food ready and things are on a schedule and you want your kids there and you have time for your crafts, I hope hopefully you have a husband that will that will pay for that. My wife has no budget. She's never had a budget. She can spend whatever she wants. She can do whatever she wants and she's never violated that. Although she has bought a couple dresses that I don't know why they were the price they were. But for the most part, it's been good and she's fine, you know. She hasn't worked in what? 6 years. So, I mean, that's pretty good. She hasn't she hasn't had to work. So, I like it's just I feel like I don't know. All I was going to say with the women thing, the the hormone thing going back to that is is the reason why I think they're happier is because like when they're on their periods or when they're having, you know, menstrual cycles, girls are complaining they shouldn't have to work during those times. Like that just drives you crazy, especially if you're on birth control and you, your body's tricking itself into thinking that it's pregnant. Men today are the same thing though. I think our T levels, my, my, my biggest thing is that the low T levels have taken away the drive to make real change in our personal lives and in the world. And so where we accept life the way it is because it's too much work to personally change and too much work to change the world. And that's what I think it's affected the most is our drive yeah. to do shit. Well, yeah, I mean, you know? and also everybody's a bunch of pussies. So there's that, but pussy, pussy, but uh, also, I mean, what about the, what about women that don't want to be a, a stay at home wife or whatever? I mean, Fuck you. Stop. Oh, I don't want to provide for my family. No, no, that's what I'm saying. We got to get back to this. Like, what do I want? What do you mean? What do you want? What's good for your, what's good for you? Okay. Want what's good for you. And why is it so hard for people to understand? Like, dude, if men got what they want, we would never get married. We'd be fucking hot whores all the time. And we would have, we'd have a harem. We'd have a harem of whores. Maybe, you know, like look at a king. A king is an example of what men want. You have midgets, you know, doing shows for you in your court. So you can laugh at midgets. You have whores you're having sex with. You have a queen to give you offspring. Like that's what men want. Okay. Look yeah. at a king's life. Conquest and gold. Like, Dude, you know what? As a regular human being, what is good for you? What are you called to? That's why I think you need God because you need some sort of a standard. But it's like women, like, well, what do women want? You know what? That's the thing. They don't know what they want. So they have yeah. to be told what is good for them and provided that in a system. And right now the system is telling them that what they should want is something that is going to be bad for them. And that's why it's like, well, can, 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 some, can some women work? Look, some women have always worked. There's always been exceptions to the rule. There's been women queens. Things happen. But majority of women are not going to be happy that way. And majority of women have been lied to. That's all I'm saying is most women would be happier at home. Right. Literally just provided for. And the reason why they're not happy at home is because their husbands are poor. That's right. Yeah. No. The, and it's, right. it's because of the low T. That's kind of what I was getting at earlier. I, I really do think that like uh, guys are just fucking. I, I think men are as much as I talk trash about women. I think men are also in sort of a sad state of affairs. I, th I think society's just falling apart, dude. I mean, I'm not going to be black pill about it and be all mopey and whatnot. You can't, I'm not going to live my life that way, but it's the reality of the world we live in, man. It's things are totally upside down and it's a mess guys. And, and again, dude, I, if, if a woman doesn't want to have children, then she shouldn't have children because imagine, imagine your mom being like, I didn't want to have you. You suck. You ruined my life. That's not going to help anybody either. Sure. There's uh women are more likely to be happier when they're most women are going to be happier at home. Uh, that's a statistic that Gavin McInnes threw out on a, on a news show a long time ago. And I think that's probably accurate, but what's, what's most women like 60% there's, and you know, like if you look back in like the frontier days, women were badass. They were chopping wood. They were making fires. They were doing all sorts of stuff that the average guy nowadays can barely do. So it's, just, we go in these waves, uh, this, the, the paradigm changes, it shifts, there's a lot of women working. Then a lot of these women are going to get older and realize they don't really like working. A lot of the women that I know that are kind of career women, they're like, man, one day I'm going to marry a rich guy and not have to work. And I'm like, well, that's hilarious. You know, that's like kind of the opposite of what energy you're throwing out there. But I mean, over time, things are going to change because I think people are, I think, our, how old are you? Me, I'm 30. I'm 31. I think our generation of men and women are very unhappy, just in general. The millennials. Dude literally but i okay maybe it's a red pill 
But I also think that at least I'm kind of aware, like I will notice, um, like I'm not going to go into the depth here right now, um, but there was something that I was doing and it's not particularly sinful um, and particularly immoral or anything, but I was like, I was like, why do I feel like I'm like not fully living up to my potential? What's going on? So I thought of it and I ended up deciding, okay, I'm not going to do this and I'm going to throw this, this out and I'm not going to do this at all because I go, I go, this is not something that is, I, I'm going to try this, right? It's called basic experimentation. Why don't I try changing a variable in my life? And just, if you're watching this, this could be anything. If you're not exercising, that could be starting exercising, sure. whatever. And dude, just changing one variable has given me so much more motivation and mentality. Just not parting hard all the time has given me so much better finances and, and, and mentality. Like I make so much more money because I have so much more time to accomplish tasks right. because I'm not hung over every day. Um, like it's a crazy thing. I know, but like, that's what millennials are like. It's like, it's almost like they're denying just reality. It's like, well, but it's really hard every week to just like go to the gym and eat healthy and, you know, and, and not just like yeah, a porn not. every day. Not I know it's like, it's only hard for about a month, by the way, I'll tell people this making changes is really hard and when you're in that first month when your brain's gonna be like this is so hard just know it's like really hard for like like the like a week is the hardest and then like 30 days is pretty hard but like after 30 days it just starts getting progressively easier so you don't have to change your whole life you just have to change for 30 days and it really does get easier but that's where millennials are like but i can't even change for 30 days and you're like damn bro that's yeah, that's why we're unhappy you can't even change for 30 days crazy the reality though is that all you have to do is tell yourself that you can do it and then you can do it. And it, it shouldn't even take 30 days. It should happen instantly because your, your mind is the most powerful thing that's in your life. It, it really is as simple as that. If you tell yourself I'm done doing this and you want to be done doing it, you'll be done doing it. It's, it's manifestation. That stuff's real. Manifestation is real. If you put the energy out there, you will accomplish it period. And uh, I think you just has, like, released. Uh, and honestly, you know what that just boils down to? It's again, it's the same thing. Sorry, dude, there's a mosquito in here or something. Um, it boils down to the same thing we were just talking about. It's as a man, you just say, I'm going to do it. And then you fucking do it. You don't have excuses. You just shut up and you do it. Simple as well, that. Well, you, you take it. So I want to finish the rest of the show on Rumble. Guys, if you're watching uh, on, on YouTube, um, we're trying to get everyone over to Rumble eventually. Um, I'll give uh, Gary there a quick break. Head over to rumble.com slash slightly offensive. You can join the chat here. Um, we have a good live audience here right now. It's a slow day. We got about 1,100 of you guys watching live on Rumble. Uh, we also have, you guys can always watch here on Locals. And we are also live right now on Censored as well. So you guys can watch there on Censored, Locals, and directly here on uh rumble the reason why we do that is because we've been we, we just always assume our youtube channel will disappear eventually it'll probably go away but you can support the show directly and you can join us at censor.tv promo code offensive that keeps the show on the air and it also funds independent media so we don't have Everything we do is alt tech. We have servers outside of Amazon, our own servers. We have backdoor payment processors, and we even have backup systems for our backup systems when people try to take us off the air. So when you're supporting this, you're supporting a infrastructure network that is actually fighting against big tech and supporting alt tech. It is so important that you do it. It is absolutely crucial. But anyway, I really do appreciate that. We're going to take a two-minute break. I'm here with uh, Gary. You can follow him if you're watching on YouTube or X. You can follow him in the description below. Follow his podcast. Give him major support. Uh, Gary, before we switch over to Rumble, I just want to give you a chance to uh, plug yourself to okay. the YouTube audience. Uh, tell them where they can find and follow you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, on Instagram, it's at the.scary.gary. I do... Uh, I cut up podcast clips and post all sorts of stuff on Instagram all the time. Uh, it's, there's a litany of different things. I think your audience might like probably 60% of what I do. And then the other, the other portion, they'll probably think I'm a degenerate lunatic. And then on YouTube, it's just Gary Faust. And uh, I do, again, those are where the full podcasts are and interviews and street man on the street stuff out of Austin. Uh, I do political stuff with firearms and also comedy and I don't know, just, you know, also, and whatever comes to mind, you know, well, yeah, and we'll have to, when I get back to the U.S., luckily I'm actually having, 
I'm actually having a few studios built. This company's building me a studio, a few things. So I'll have to have you out in person. Um, I used to do a much bigger production, but now I've just been live streaming, hanging out while I'm in the good old Aussie land, hanging out with my family for a couple of years here. Uh, but I'll come back and uh, we'll have to do something together. Anyway, for you guys watching directly on uh, uh, YouTube or X, we'll see you over on Rumble, taking a two and a half minute break. And we're going to finish uh, this discussion because I've got some great videos on responsibility. Um, and also knowing, I think everyone in the chat, by the way, Gary, like when you say that, like 60% is what, what they'll like and 40% is degenerate, that literally describes like most of us in this entire community. <laughs> like we're like 60% good people, 40% degenerate. So we all like, oh, okay, we, we try to do the right thing, but we don't always do it. All right, I'll see you guys there.